Hello everyone, welcome to the Cloud Indoor Migration Factory session. My name is Wally Lu, Principal Consultant from AWS. In the next 30 minutes, I will introduce Cloud Indoor Migration Factory solution and talk about typical large migration challenges. And in the end, I'll share some um, you know, uh, best practice and lesson learned from our customers. Let's get started. So first, large migration challenges. Have you thought about um, maybe migrate thousand servers in about six months? Or maybe 3,000 servers in about 12 months? To migrate one server may be very easy, but the scale really changes everything. A simple five minutes task, such as restart server, if you repeat that a thousand times, that's 5,000 minutes. A simple 10-step process to migrate a server again for 1,000 servers, that could be 10,000 steps. We want to design a solution to help you simplify the migration, reduce the number of steps for large migrations. So this is the desired state. Ideally, we want to design a solution that's simple enough that you push one button today, you can migrate all your servers tomorrow from your data center to AWS. However, every customer is different. There's one, no one size fits all. In reality, there are a couple of things we need to consider because for large migrations, we use different tools to support migration and different customers use different tools. You may have you know, discovery tools, migration tools, CMDB, and data in the Excel spreadsheet as well. You may also want to use the project management tools to manage a large migration as well. Now, people side side things as well. You may have lots of people, different teams to support large migration. Infrastructure teams, cloud teams, maybe application teams, and testing teams, and so on. So many people involved. And the third thing here is, there are many small tasks as well, part of a large migration. For example, you may want to check a C drive free space, and you, know, you may also want to install agent on a source machine. And how about select a target instance type for your servers? By repeat that a thousand times, it's really a big deal. So we want to design a solution that is simple enough, but also flexible to help our customers solve all these problems. So what do we do? So let's revise, change the desired state a little bit. Here's a revised desired state. What if we split a big button into three, six, or nine smaller buttons? So in theory, if, the, if we push the right button at the right time, in the right order, we can achieve the same result, right? Or even better, because you can add a new button here or replace existing buttons to integrate with your existing systems. That's even better. So that's what, how we want to solve this problem here. So let me introduce you Cloud Indoor Migration Factory solution. But before we talk about the solution, I want to spend one minute to quickly talk about what is Cloud Indoor Migration. Cloud Indoor Migration is a re-host migration tool. It helps you migrate from anywhere to AWS. It was designed for rapid mass scale migration, and it is a block level replication tool that replicates every single block from source to AWS. And it is also agent based migration tool as well. So that's Cloud Indoor. And what is the Migration Factory solution? Why do we need it? Just like any other services and solutions we develop at AWS, we're always working backwards from customers to think about how can we design a solution to solve customer problems. So this specific solution, we try to use that to solve the large migration challenges. So Cloud Indoor Migration Factory solution, or CEMF, it is a automation engine built to accelerate your Cloud Indoor migration using the APIs. And it is also a metadata store to help you save all the data in one place. You know, you may have your server data, application data, and source data as well in one place in a single source of tools. And the third thing here is we want to share with you is a perfect use case for the solution is if you have more than 100 servers to lift and shift to AWS, and using this solution will help you accelerate your migration to AWS. So from the solution design perspective, we try to solve two problems here. One is integration. As we talked about before, there's so many things involved, so many people involved. We want to build a metadata store 
that is able to integrate with everything as a single source of truth. So like this diagram here, you can import the data from your CSV files if you want to, and you can import data from your CMDB using the same standard REST API, or you can leverage the same metadata in the metadata store to automate the migration activities, such as I want to install software for all my servers in wave one, since we know which servers in wave one in metadata store, to automate that it becomes really easy to do. Also, you may also want to you know, automate a cutover process as well. Instead of cutting over the servers one by one, we want to integrate with Cloud into API, so that enables us to cut over large number of servers, such as 20 or 30 servers together using the APIs. So that's integration. Let's talk about automation piece. And since we have everything integrated, that's easier for us to automate across different tools as well, right? Using this as example here for cloud indoor automation activities, first column is the build phase. In the build phase, we have three tasks. First one is check prerequisites. And why this is important? Because you don't want to spend hours and time or days to do troubleshooting. What if something doesn't work, your application doesn't work in the cut of a window, you may have to spend a couple hours to figure out root cause. But the root cause can be easy as just not enough free space in C drive. You can spend five minutes to check a free space before the cutover, that could save you hours of time, right? That's really worth to do it. However, five minutes for a thousand servers again gonna take you 5,000 minutes. What we wanna do here is run one automation scripts that is able to check the prerequisites for all your Windows and Linux machines all together in the same wave. So example here is for Windows, we check a C drive free space, .NET framework version, TCP443 to cloud into a console, and TCP1500 to cloud into a replication server. So you run that once for all your servers in the same wave. So now when your servers are ready, you want to push an agent to the source machines as well, right? To install one agent is super easy, maybe only three to five minutes per server. However, if we're talking about 100 servers, things become a little bit more complicated because you have Windows, you have Linux, you may also have 10 different target accounts. 10 different target AWS accounts means you get 10 different installation tokens, one for each cloud indoor project. So you may end up with 20 different ways to install agent on 100 servers. That's not easy. Even with the tools like Ansible or SCCM, you still need to figure out for any server, do I use method number one or 20 to install agent on the source machine? Now, using the automation script here, we're able to push agent to any source, any Windows machines, any Linux machines, and also you can push to any target machines as well using one automation script. So, this is automation we provide a part of a solution, but as I mentioned before, one size does not fit all. You know, you can add additional automation or customized automation to integrate with your existing systems such as your password management system or maybe your CMDB to build a fully end-to-end -end automation to support large-scale migration. So that's automation. From architecture perspective, we can deploy the solution to your AWS account using one automation um, you know, CloudFormation template. When you deploy the CloudFormation template, it will deploy the front-end and the back-end. The front-end is JavaScript application, the back-end is Lambda functions and DynamoDB. We use Cognito to authenticate with the solution. And even you have multiple accounts to migrate, you only need to deploy the solution once to your account and use that to support the migration to multiple target accounts. And on the left hand side, this is the migration execution server, a Windows server in your data center, in your AD domain. So we can use this server to connect to your source Windows servers, use the remote PowerShell WinRM protocol, or we can also use the same script to connect to your Linux machines using standard SSH protocol. And that's the architecture for the solution. Let's do a quick demo. I wanna show you um, how we can use this solution to accelerate your migration. So I want to show you three things in the demo. First thing is import server data to the CEMF solution. Instead of updating the server metadata one by one on the console, how do we import the data from a CSV file? Second thing I want to show you is how do we check the prerequisites and push agent to the multiple source machines, both Windows and Linux at the same time for the entire wave. And the third thing here I want to show you is how do we do cutover? How do we launch many servers together instead of launching a server one by one from the CE console? 
So let's get started with the demo. Now I'm on the demo server right now. I'm using the demo server to run all the automation script and demo server is used to mimic the source data center environment. So this server is in the source AD domain. I can use the server to connect to all my source window servers using remote PowerShell WinRM protocol or SSH to all the Linux servers. So let's start with automation number one, import server data into Cloud Indoor Migration Factory. But before we do that, I want to show you how do we normally do that manually so we can compare the two, right? This is Cloud Indoor console. Now we have two servers here. Now normally you can select one server and update the blueprint. Blueprint is the target instance information. You have to select instance type, you have to select subnet, security groups, and save the blueprint one by one for all your servers. Think about that. What if you have to repeat that 100 times for your 100 servers, right? We won't change that by using the data in a CSV or JSON file and import all that data into the migration factory. Now, let's take a look. This is the Cloud Indoor Migration Factory web console. We are on the resource list page here. On the resource list, we have waveless, application list, and serverless. In wave one, you may have three applications, 10 servers, wave two, maybe 20 servers. Right now, we want to import the data from CSV to the factory. Now, this is my CSV. We have four servers here, two Windows servers and two Linux servers. I have source server information, including operating system, FQDN and target server information as well, such as subnet, security groups, instance type. We can use information here to update Cloud Indoor Blueprint. Let's import the data into the factory by selecting the CSV. Within just a few seconds, we will have four servers in the factory, two Windows servers and two Linux servers here in wave one. Now, another option to get data into the factory is if you have a large data set with server application waved together in a big CSV, you can always run a Python script to ingest the data into the factory. Now we have the data here. What if you want to change something? You can always switch to pipeline page and change the information, such as you may change your application from wave three to wave four if there's any delay and save application. And you can do the same thing for the server as well by changing the server from one subnet to another and save the server information as well. Now we have the data. Let's do automation number two. Let's validate the prerequisites on the source machine and push the cloud into agent on the source machine as well. Let's run the first automation script here, which is zero dash prerequisite check. Let's provide a wave ID as a filter and Cloud Indoor Replication Server IP because we want to validate the connectivity from the source machine to Cloud Indoor Replication Server via TCP 1500. So let's test that. And first step is I need to log in to the migration factory with my username and a password. Now we have the server list for Wave 1, two Windows servers, and two Linux servers. Looks like everything's good for Windows, and let me type a username and a password for Linux this time. Of course, check different settings for Linux, and only a few seconds later, we have a final report and tells you which server passed the checks and which server failed. Looks like everything's good. Now, if we switch to the resource list page here and filter migration status, we will see something change from the factory. Now let's filter this. So for the four servers in wave one, the status changed to test prerequisite check pass, right? This is because every time you run automation script, it sends a feedback to Cloud Indoor Migration Factory API to update the status for you automatically. So you always have visibility of the entire life cycle of your servers. And your migration engineer doesn't need to spend their valuable time focused on status update because this is all automated process. Now, next step is to push Cloud Indoor agent to the source machine. Let's do that. As I mentioned before, this should work for any source, any target. Let's see. First, let me log into the factory, use my username and password. Now we have to provide a Cloud Indoor API token. So 
So this is my cloud indoor API token. Let me paste it here. And we are getting a serverless, two Windows servers and two Linux servers, right? This means this works for any source, any Windows and any Linux. We also have servers in demo two and demo three project. This actually means works for any target. So let's type a username and a password for Linux. So the process starts from the first server in the first project. Since the first server is Windows, it is actually using remote PowerShell to connect to Windows. If the next server is Linux, the script will automatically switch to Linux uh, using SSH to connect to Linux servers. Now, this will take a few minutes. In the meantime, I want to show you automation number three. How do we cut over large number of servers in a cut of a window? Right. Before we do that, again, I want to show you and compare the differences how we do things manually. Normally, on the Cloud Indoor console, you have to update the blueprint one by one. That's the first step, right? Before you cut it over any servers, select the right instance type, the right stop and then, and switch back to machines and select the machines. Click a button, launch a server, either in the test mode or cut over mode, right? If you have 100 servers, you have to repeat that step 100 times, right? Think about that, select 100 servers out of 500 on the console and update the blueprint one by one. That's a big task. We want to change that a little bit because how we do in the migration factory is completely different because we never touch the servers. We always operate at a wave level. Let's grab the API token from here and select a project name. Let's do a dry run first. And launch type will be test wave ID three. So dry run does not launch any real servers. Dry run basically validating your data. So we import the data from CSV. Now this time we want to validate the data, make sure there's no typos, there's no invalid values in the CSV, right? You don't want to spend your valuable time in the cut of a window to troubleshoot issues like typo. So we should do dry run a couple of days or weeks before the cutover. Let's do a dry run. So as soon as click the button launch servers, this will send the data to Cloud Indoor API to validate the data. Now you either get a response like dry run was successful or dry run failed. So it looks like dry run was successful for all the machines. Now we can change the dry run from yes to no to launch a real server. Let's do that and launch your server. So similarly, this will send data to Cloud Indoor API, update the blueprint, check the replication settings, and create a job, not for one server, but for the entire wave. Now we have test job created for machine two and three, right? Let's compare with Cloud Indoor console here. And there is a job for my entire wave, wave three. So you may notice the difference here is I did not select any servers, right? I simply choose a project name and a wave ID and then click a button launch servers, whether it's one server, 10 server, or 50 servers, that doesn't matter because we launched the entire wave together. So this will help you accelerate the migration by focusing on the waves and eliminate uh, some of the potential issues during the manual process. Okay, let's go back and check the agent installation. Looks like everything's good here. We have agents successfully installed on four servers. Now, if we switch to the resourceless page here, we can see some status change as well. Migration status for this four server changed to see agent install success. And these two is test instance launch, right? Similar to the previous script, every time you run automation, or do anything from the factory console, we will update status automatically for you so you always have the visibility of the entire life cycle. Now let's validate again using the fact using the cloud indoor console here. We have two Windows servers in demo two project and we have two Linux servers in demo three project as well, right? This actually means the script works for any source and any target. So that is the end of the demo. I just want to show you this one to let you know that how automation could help you accelerate your migration to AWS. Okay, let's talk about best practices and lesson learned from our CMF customers. So customer A, large cutover in just a few hours. What I mean by large, have you thought about cutover hundreds of servers in just a few hours? 
So that's exactly what this customer did. They were able to cut over 600 servers in just a few hours. So how they did it, what did we learn from this customer? Number one, minimize the change is a key for large cutover. Change is a good thing, but also sometimes it's a risk as well. So it's fair to say that if you're going to change 20 things, generally the risk is bigger than just change one thing. So you may want to change your you know, computer name, AD domain, or even IP address of the server as well, right? However, what if there's some legacy applications, hard code IP somewhere in the application, but nobody knows? That's a risk. So for this customer, they try to mitigate the risk by not even changing the IP address to cut over the entire subnet together. And that's one thing. Another thing that's similar is the networking, right? Ideally, we want to build a application-specific secure group for every single application before migration. However, there's some challenges because maybe due to the tight schedule, maybe due to lack of knowledge of the application, we may not be able to do that for large migration um, you know, if you have a tight schedule. So for this customer, they develop a generic migration secure group to support large migration and push the application secure group design to a later stage. That's how they did a large cutover in just a few hours. And next thing we learn from this customer is automation with the migration factory solution is also the key because you do not want to cut over your servers one by one. You do want to bundle the server together and launch your server together to save you some time. And last thing from this customer, but it's also very important is make sure your app teams are ready. And your application team is really critical because any large migration is never just a infrastructure project, right? We need to make sure we get an application team, business unit involved as part of the migration. They are in the same team. They are not just playing the supporting role. They have to help us do the you know, application testing and change application, make a go and no-go decisions as part of the large migration. So really important, make sure your app team are fully aware and support the large migration. That's for customer A. Customer B, we have you know, another customer scaled from 10 servers to 90 servers a week. Actually scaled from one cutover to three migration cutovers in a week, that's about 90 servers. So how they did it and what did we learn from this customer specifically? One is plan the migration wave ahead of time. So believe it or not, large migration stall sometimes not because you don't have the right team and skill set, not because you don't have the right tools for the migration. You may have a perfect team and skills and perfect tools for the migration, but you may not have enough servers to support it. So what I mean by that, you want to migrate 50 servers a week continuously for a few months. What if you don't have that many servers ready to do the migration? And that's the challenge we find sometimes for large migrations. For this customer, they finished the wait planning for 900 servers ahead of time. So they were able to import all 900 servers into CEMF so that 900 servers are ready for large migration. Even with 90 servers a week, that's enough for 10 weeks. So that's one thing we learned from this customer. Second thing is automate the server data intake process as well. So you may have server information in the Excel spreadsheet, server information in their CMDB, in their discovery tools as well. Now, try to avoid doing manual copy pasting from A to B and merge the data together. One, that's not efficient. And two, there might be a lot of errors during the manual activity copy pasting. So for this customer, they have a big way planner Excel spreadsheet in the SharePoint. What they do is they log into SharePoint to do the way planning, um, you know, basically which server in wave one, which server in wave two. That will trigger a Terraform process. Terraform process basically updating the on-prem firewalls and create a security groups for the specific server as well. And that triggers another Lambda function to validate all the data just to make sure there's no typos, has all the data ready for migration. And that Lambda triggers a second Lambda function to import the data to CMF ready for migration. So as you can see from here, there's only one manual process in the middle, which is someone logging to the SharePoint update the, the web planner so that triggers all the other processes. Everything else is fully automated from end to end. That will save you a lot of time and avoid a lot of errors during the large migration. So from this customer, we learn 
you know, more automation actually means less troubleshooting. Less troubleshooting means faster migration. Customer C, they had a one gig direct net link, but they were able to migrate 500 servers in just a three months. And remember, they shared that one gig link with the production servers as well. Now, what do we learn from this customer, how they did it? Number one, develop the end-to-end -end process in the early stage of the migration. They did that. And don't wait till last minute and two days before cutover, still trying to figure out who is going to install agent on my source machine and who is going to shut down the server and who is going to change the DNS. Make sure you develop that process, RC model in the early stage of the migration. Make sure everyone is fully aware their role and responsibility. So no question will ever be asked who does what for the migration process. Next thing is they develop a centralized tracking dashboard for everyone to track the entire migration status, just like this one. So you can save maybe 15 minutes every day. You don't need to do the status update meetings anymore. So everyone simply logging to the dashboard to see the status for the entire migration. 15 minutes may sound small, but if you have 20 people in the team, that's 300 minutes every day. That's, that's quite a big number. So this really helps them, you know, gives their leadership visibility and help them manage the entire migration using the centralized dashboard. And the next thing is, since I mentioned they only had a one gig direct net link, they actually developed additional automation, just as I mentioned before, we want this CMF solution to be flexible so any customer can develop additional automation for their use cases. That's what they did. They develop additional automation to integrating with the CEMF using the metadata store, but to disable cloud indoor replication in the business hours to avoid any impact to production servers for the entire wave and enable the replication after business hours. That's really useful. So that's how they could use the only one gig link and share that link with production servers, but still able to migrate 500 servers in just three months. That's what we learned from customer C. So to quickly summarize it, large migration best practices. Number one, plan the migration wave ahead of time. Do not wait till last minute and still try to figure out which server goes to which wave. Make sure you have enough buffer to support a migration, um, you know, at least a couple of weeks ahead of the migration schedule. Number two is develop end-to-end -end process and automation in the early stage. Again, do not wait till last minute, still trying to figure out who is going to log into a server, to install agent, to shut down the server. Define that process, develop automation in early stage, gonna help you with a large migration. And next thing is automation with CEMF is also the key. As we talk about one example here, more automation actually means faster migration. Number four is minimize unnecessary change. Change is a good thing, but this is not a wish list, right? Since we're doing the rehost migration, typically the goal is to exit data center with a hard deadline. Some app owners may want to, you know, modernize their application from, you know, um, monoliths to microservices or change it to serverless. That's understandable, but as part of the rehost migration, we should push that to a later stage instead of part of the migration schedule. Now, last thing, again, very important, prepare your application teams, super important. Make sure they are aware they're part of the migration team. Um, they are not just supporting the migration because without app owners, we will not have successful migrations. So that's all for today. That's the takeaways for today's session and some useful resources for you. First one is Cloud Indoor Migration Page, if you're interested. Second one here is Cloud Indoor Migration Fetch Implementation Guide for you to deploy the solution in your environment. And third link here is the best practices, how you use the solution for large migrations. We also have a few other links here, uh, like Migration Immersion Day and AWS Workshops as well. Feel free to take a look. And I thank you for watching the session today and see you next time.